places, please time. <laughs> That is a take. Hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome to this video, which I'm shooting in the studio of uh, Lachlan McClay, who is a uh, workshop organizer. He put together a series of workshops here in Denver, Colorado. And um, I'm giving workshops together with Tom and Davey. I did some workshops on lead playing, um, on comping. Tommy set up, this is my uh, Altamir M30 with the custom Bridge, there's a really nice video, great video on my YouTube channel where you can see how it does. Mateo, Mateo, right? Yeah, Mateos. Mateos, uh, Spanish with fear, really great. Tommy did an excellent setup. And the special thing is, if you buy this guitar, it comes with a pickup, which mm -hmm. you can't detach. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use your steamer, you can use it. It's, it's a really great guitar with easy to play and a great sound. But this video, I want to talk about three things that I was talking about, or one thing that I was talking about in the workshops, which I haven't talked about before on my channel, and I call them inner string voicings. If you were paying attention uh, in the song we just played called uh, Sung Shitan, I was uh, the comping Tommy with only voicings on the inner string, so I wasn't using the outer strings. And um, it works especially well for minor tunes. There's three voicings you have to know. First is a minor six voicing, so let's go to, uh, let's say, minor swing. You have to know A minus six, which is um, seven seven five seven. Again on the inner strings, D minus six, which would be two three two three. And the nice thing is for dominant chords like E seven, you can play a diminished voicing, and then that would be, for instance, uh, five six four six, and you can shift that chord up three frets and it will stay the same chord because it's a diminished chord. Now you can play the whole song with these voicings. So this voicing, this voicing and this voicing. So let's play maybe one round of minor string and Tommy will play a solo. One, two, one, two, three, four. great right but now of course there's more possibilities because if a diminished chord works for a dominant chord you can for instance add a7 in minor string before the d minor and you can play the d, that a7 here so now you get stuff like i can play the a minor here right? i can play S a7 there i can play e7 there so if you start mixing these three forcings sitting over the neck you get a very varied uh, comping only on the middle string. So let me do one more round where I shift the chords around a bit more. One, two, one, two, three, four. This is a very good way to practice, but then what you could do is you could mix these inner string voicings with your normal voicings, your normal standard minor swing, and you can get a new kind of sound in the rhythm guitar without much need for substitutions or weird voicings. You can just switch between your, I would say, 
complete or all strings voicing, voicings and inner string voicings. And it has a distinct sound, the inner strings voicings, which you can switch to when you feel that you need a new color in your comping. So let's do one more chorus where I switch between the two uh, ways of comping. One, two, one, two. <laughs> really well for uh, minor tunes but let me show you a trick which you can also use in major tunes if you have this diminished chord for E7 you could switch you could uh, slide back any finger and get a dominant chord for instance if I slide back my third finger so it sits here so now I get five five four six instead of five six four six I have a G7 chord if I slide back from the diminished voicing my first finger I get a D flat seven chord. If I slide back my fourth finger, so I have to switch these two fingers, I get an E seven chord. So by um, practicing that, you could actually play normal dominant chords uh, on a on the middle string. So let's play let's play a two five one in C, which we keep repeating, right? Mm -hmm. And then I will show you what it sounds like if I play D minor to G seven like this, and then maybe I go to C major seven because that's also on the middle on the inner strings. One, two. One, two, three, four. Um, let me let us play one more tune for you. I'm on another minor tune. Let's play uh, a minor blues, right? Then I will use the same forcing. This forcing for G minor, for C minor. This forcing or this forcing, right? For G minor, I could, and then for D7, I could use these diminished chords, and for E flat 7, I could use these ones, and I could even take um, this forcing, let me see, yeah, this forcing, and I could slide back my third finger to get a normal D7 force. Let's see what happens. Just like play two chords, maybe one, two. There are more inner string forcings. In this song, for example, I was using D flat, D seven sharp nine. Right? I could be using stuff like like a normal minor chord. They're all in the middle strings, and you can find many combinations only using the inner strings. And the end result or the end goal is to mix the normal voicings with the inner string voicings. So this concludes this little lesson about inner string voicings. I hope you'll find a use for it, but I bet you will. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. I will be shooting a bunch of videos when I get back to the Netherlands, which is uh, June 26th. So, goodbye from Tommy and me, and from Lachlan, who's behind the camera. Tot zien. Tot ziens. <laughs> That's a wrap. Okay, you can turn it off. I'll do it. <laughs>
just. You know, it's just that it's just that 